Hey, Siobhan, <gasps> what are you doing? Shh, Tyler, I'm looking for Australian threatened species, animals, but oh. you have to be really quiet. Oh. Have you seen any yet? Not yet. <gasps> There's a quokka! Wow, a quokka! Tyler! Shh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hi Play Uppers and welcome back to On Air Play Up. Today we're making animal masks for National Threatened Species Day. And on National Threatened Species Day we learn about threatened species all around Australia. And a threatened species is a type of plant or animal that there aren't many of left. So we need to look after them so they're around forever. That's right. And it's a national day, which means we're talking all about threatened species in Australia. And Australia is home to more than 500,000 animals and plants that you can't find anywhere else in the whole world. Wow. So it's important we keep them safe. That's true. And there's a few threatened Australian animals on the play-up craft table today, I think. Maybe you can spot them. Mm. Maybe we can spot them. <gasps> so we've got a platypus <laughs> and some species of platypus in some places are threatened. Ooh. And I think here in the burrow, we have a wombat. <gasps> and look up in the trees. There's a koala. A koala. Oh, and, one there. <gasps> and a Tassie devil over here. Oh, Maybe a devil. few little other animals. Mm. So get thinking about one of your favourite Australian animals for your animal mask. But True. first, we need to acknowledge the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people of Australia. You, you can, can do, do it with us. us. You ready? Together, we touch the ground of the land. And together we reach for the sky that covers the land. And we touch our hearts, which care for the land. All right, now we also need to wash our hands. Yeah! <gasps> okay, we gotta sing the song. You ready? Okay. <laughs> have you got enough? I have, thank okay. you, Siobhan. <laughs> okay, good, you ready? If, if you're crafting and you know it, wash your hands, hands. scrub, scrub. If you're crafting and you know it, wash your hands, splish, splish. If, if you're crafting and you know it, and you really wanna show it. If you're crafting and you know it, wash your hands, scrub. Scrub, scrub. Splish. Sploosh? Sploosh, maybe? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, hands clean. What materials will we need, Tyler? Okay, so for your animal mask today, we're going to need some paper or cardboard. Doesn't matter what colour. No. And we're going to need some decoration bits. Maybe you have some feathers if you're making a bird. Maybe you have some pipe cleaners or some pom-poms. But if not, that's okay. You can just use crayons to decorate. Crayons, or maybe textures or pencils, whatever you can find. Mm -hmm. You're also going to need some string. string. <gasps> oh! Or maybe you could use some paper just to tie your mask up later. That's right. And the rest of our crafting essentials. So scissors. Remember to be careful with those. Glue stick so you can get stuck in. <laughs> <laughs> and sticky tape. Sticky tape. Mm -hmm. All right, so to start with, it doesn't matter what animal you're going to make, we all start with the same shape. That's right. So, what shape is it? Mm, what colour am I going to use, Tyler? Mm, Maybe I'll nice. use a nice brown. Oh, beautiful. Mm. I'm going to use this grey. So, the shape is a bit like a jelly bean? Mm, it is. It's the shape of your forehead and your eyes. So, you start at your forehead, you go down around your cheek up over your nose and down and back up and it looks a bit like a jelly bean. Hmm. All right, so I'm going to draw it on the paper. Now you want it to be about as wide as your head, so about this wide. <laughs> okay, right. ready, drawing, drawing my jelly bean. Drawing. Okay, looks a bit like that. How does yours look, Taylor? A little bit like that too. <laughs> it looks a little bit different, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, so once you've drawn that, you can start to cut it out. Cut it out. If you need a bit of help with cutting, that's okay. Mm, so, Siobhan. Yeah? What threatened Australian animal do you think you'll make for mm, your mask? Well, I think I'm going to make a bilby. A bilby mask. And bilbies are small furry animals that find their food by searching in the sand with their long snouts. And bilbies are threatened because... Lots of different animals try to eat them and then have enough food to eat. Oh. Yeah. And bilbies are pretty cool. They are pretty cute. 
Well, I was having a look at this koala here, so I thought I would make a koala mask. <gasps> Good idea. Did you know that koalas only eat eucalyptus leaves and they can eat mm. up to a kilogram a day? Whoa. That's like this much. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's a lot of leaves. It's and a lot of leaves. Guess what else? What? They can sleep for more than 18 hours a day. Whoa. A bit like me on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and why are koalas threatened, Tyler? Well, koalas are threatened because things have damaged their habitat, their homes. So the trees they live in, like the recent bushfires, and sometimes when we clear trees to make room for things like roads and houses. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so we've got our jelly bean shape for our mask. <laughs> now we do. <laughs> but I can't see out of it, Tyler. Siobhan! Where, Where have are you gone? You? So we need to cut some eye holes. Okay. All right. So in the middle of your mask, you can put it up to your face and, and gent very gently feel where your eyes are going to be. And then draw two big circles. Mm, and it's a good idea to draw the circles a little bit bigger than you think they need to be to make sure you can see. I've drawn mine way bigger than my eyes are going, actually are. And then I have a trick for cutting them out. So... <laughs> you get your your circle that you've drawn and you fold it in half. So some on that side, some on that side, and then you just cut around the semicircle. And then you've got a whole hole. A whole hole. That is a great tip, Siobhan. <laughs> now, I have a technique as well. So what I'm going to do with mine is just cut straight up and into the, where the eye hole will be and then cut around there like that. Show you that. And then just remember when you're finished to put a little bit of tape across there. If you need a little bit of help cutting the holes for your mask, that's okay. Get some help because it can be a little bit tricky. Hmm. I'm just snipping that out there. You got your eye holes? I've got one. <laughs> Still doing my other one. <laughs> it can Pretty be good. a little bit tough. Mm. So, Siobhan. Yeah. On National Threatened Species Day, we get to learn all about different Australian plants and animals. Yeah. But did you know that lots of our favourite Australian animals are actually threatened? Yeah, but by learning all about our animals, we can also learn about ways to help them. Hmm. Let's think of a few different threatened Australian animals. Oh, good idea. I'll act them out. Okay. And then you can act them out. Okay. okay. You've got to guess what it is. I'll guess what it is. Okay. <gasps> Grab it, grab it, grab it. Hmm. Grab it. it says ribbit and it looks a little bit like a frog. <gasps> That's right. <laughs> oh, good. It's the corroboree frog. Oh. It's actually a poisonous frog that is bright yellow and black. And it's threatened because big animals like horses and pigs walk over where it lives and can damage it. Okay. All right. See if you can get what this one is. You ready? <gasps> Is that the cassowary again from when we did International Day of the Tropics? That's a threatened bird in Australia. No, no, no. Look, look. Oh, Tassie Devil. Yeah, it's the Tasmanian Devil. And they were once found all over Australia. Now you can only find them in Tasmania. Oh. And they're threatened because there's a disease that makes them very sick. And, like the frog, some of their homes get squashed by larger animals. Hmm. Alright, I've got another one. <laughs> okay. You ready? Yes. <laughs> um, it's low to the ground and it's a bit stompy. <gasps> is it a wombat? It is! <laughs> Wombats are super cool. We even got one on the craft. Oh, there's one in the burrow. <gasps> And okay. <laughs> wombats are threatened because of yeah. the fires and also the loss of their habitat, so their homes. Yeah, that's right. Okay, last one. Ready? <gasps> squall! 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 Is that you, Siobhan? <laughs> <laughs> Nearly. Oh, no, that's an eagle, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the Tasmanian wedgetail eagle. And they're threatened from, not, from having not enough places to make their nests. 
Mm. I love trees. So there's some great ideas there for what your mask could be. Mm. I wonder what our play uppers are up to. I bet they have some great ideas. Yeah, they bet they do. Okay, we've got a, our eye holes and our shape, but they also need ears. They do. Both of our animals have ears. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. as you can see from this koala here, koalas have big floppy kind of ears mm. and they're a bit like a half circle shape or a semi-circle shape. So what I'm going to do is take my piece of paper, draw two semi-circles and then cut them out for ears and I'll show you that when I've drawn Good them. Good idea. Okay, so bilbies have very long rabbit-like ears. So I'm going to draw two long ear shapes and then cut them out. Mm. I'll show mm. you. Okay, one ear two ears got them drawn there now i'm going to cut them out here we go and i've drawn my two semi-circle shapes for my koala ears mm -hmm. and i'm going to start cutting them out as well good idea okay, okay. snipping snip 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 snip, snip. Now, this can be a little tricky remember so get help if you need it yeah okay snipping Oh, they're big ears. Oh. I bet the bilby can actually hear really well. They must. Their ears are so big. Yeah. Okay, I've got my ears cut out. Now I'm going to do a little bit of colouring, I think. And then I'll stick them on with some sticky tape. Oh, great idea. I'm still cutting mine out. So I've cut one out. I'm just doing the other one there. And then I will stick it on the top of my koala there. You could use glue or sticky tape to stick that on. So Tyler, what animal have you been learning about for National Threatened Species Day? I've been learning about the pangolin. The pangolin. Pangolins are pretty special, Tyler, but they're not from Australia and it's National Threatened Species Day. Oh. We're only talking about animals from Australia. That's right. Oh, well, the other one I've been learning about that I really like is the mahogany glider. <gasps> Ooh, what's that? Well, the mahogany glider is a little possum creature mm. and it has flaps of skin that go from its wrist all the way down to its ankle <gasps> on each side so that it can glide through the trees. Wow, like a built-in parachute. A bit like a parachute, yeah. Wow. They can glide more than half a soccer field. Whoa, that's so far. Yeah, but of course the mahogany glider is threatened because they only live in one small area of forest in Queensland. Mm. And so anything that hurts that forest is not good for the glider. Yeah, that's So that's true. things like the recent bushfires, when the trees are cleared, or even fences that are built through the bush. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've been learning about an animal too, Tyler. <gasps> Have you? I've been learning about the northern hopping mouse. The northern hopping mouse? Yeah, it's a very small mouse. It only grows to be about 10 centimetres. Oh, Tyler! I found one! Did you? Yeah! It's called the Northern Hopping Mouse because it stands up on its two hind legs and hops like a little tiny mini kangaroo. That's so cool! Yeah! And the Northern Hopping Mouse is threatened because of bushfires, like a bit like the mahogany glider, but also from feral cats. Oh. Feral cats sometimes like to eat small animals. Mm. And of course, a feral cat used to be a house cat, maybe like the kind you've seen at home or at a friend's house. Yeah. But of course, cats were brought to Australia from other places overseas. Yeah. And then they escaped and got released into the bush. Yeah. And that makes them an introduced species. Yeah. And Australian animals that are native species, which means they've always lived here, like bilbies and the non hopping mouse. They aren't used to seeing these introduced species, so they don't know how to hide from them. No, and that's why lots of people keep their cats inside or keep a close eye on them while they're outside to make sure that they're not hurting our native animals. Good idea. Okay, have you got your ears? I do. I've got my koala ears. Oh, that one's a bit floppy. Oh, it's a bit floppy. I've got my bilby ears. Oh, looking great. <laughs> but we don't... I can't smell or anything yet. Oh. I think we need a nose. Good or thinking. A snout. Fantastic. How are you going to make your notes? Well, 
I'm just looking at these koalas and they've got a big round nose. So Ooh. I'm going to draw a big round shape. It's a bit like a circle if you stretch the top and bottom. So it's an oval. Good idea. So well, bilbies have a really long snout. So I'm going to draw a long triangle and then put a little circle at the end and then cut it out. That's a good idea. Mm. So I'll just show you that's my koala nose. And now I'm going to colour it in with my crown and then cut it out. Maybe you could put, you could use this long triangle for a beak if yeah. it's a bird. Maybe if you're making a Tasmanian wedge tail eagle. Yeah. yeah. So I've got my long triangle with my circle at the end and I'm just going to bend it in half just gently. So it looks a bit more like a snout. Like that. That's looking good. And then I'm going to sticky tape it to the front of my mask. And you can do the exact same thing for a beak, if you like. Exact same. If you're making a different animal, maybe like a wombat or a Tassie devil, they all have slightly different noses. That's right. So you might change the shape a little bit. Or you could make a plant mask that doesn't even have a nose oh. and just draw lots of plants on your mask. Yeah, leaves and flowers. That'd be cool too. Because mm, it's not just animals that are threatened, Tyler. It's also plants. Yeah, lots of our great native plants, like some of our wattle trees and some types of eucalyptus trees are also threatened. Yeah. And remember the wallaby pine from our tree day video, Tyler? No, I It's don't. the dinosaur tree. <gasps> the dinosaur tree. Yay. Yay. There's well, only a few of them left, Tyler. <laughs> we need to look after them. We do. There's only a few left in the Blue Mountains. That's right. Yeah. I bet our play authors would be able to find some amazing Australian native species yeah. of plants near where they live. Oh, they would. What plants can we see around the play up craft table? Mm. Mm. I see some grass over here, Tyler. Oh, that may be a native Australian grass. Ooh, mm. and I see some wattle. Oh, the yellow flowers Ooh. and oh, a eucalyptus tree, I think. That's wow. by the koala. And there's it? a purple flower over there, Tyler. Oh. Oh, what's that? Well, Siobhan, <laughs> this might look really nice, but actually oh, this is a weed. It's a weed? It's called Patterson's Curse. <gasps> and although it does look nice, it grows so fast mm. that other plants can't grow there. <gasps> and weeds might be okay in the garden, but they can hurt our very special native plants. Yeah, and that's why it's good that we know what plants are weeds and which ones are native so that we can look out for them in our mm. local area. Yeah, like I just spotted that one. <laughs> you did. Good job. <laughs> okay, we've got our noses and our ears. But bilbies have fur too. They do. So I think I'm going to draw my fur on with some crayon. Mm. What are you going to add? Well, I was just thinking, mm. koalas have kind of big cheeks, don't they? Like yeah, this? Yeah, they do. Yeah, a bit like this one. Big eat furry all those leaves. cheeks. Oh, a bit like me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to draw some cheeks for my koala. Now they're going to be round shapes. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to draw two big circles on my paper and I'll show you that once I've drawn Good them. idea. I'm just drawing my fur on. Just doing some squiggles. So they're my cheek shapes, a bit like my ears. And then I'm just going to start to cut them out. Good idea. How's your fur going there? It's good. It's looking very furry. I think I might also add some whiskers, Tyler. Some whiskers? We always have whiskers. Ooh. So I'm going to use this pipe cleaner. But if you don't have any pipe cleaner, that's okay. You could just cut out some strips of paper. Oh, that would be a great mm. idea. I'm going to cut my pipe cleaner in half. Ooh. Ooh. And I'm going to hold it in the middle and then bend the top bit, the bottom bit down a bit. And then... Whiskers. There's some great whiskers. <laughs> and I'm going to sticky tape them under my nose. The Bilby's nose. Not my nose. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty funny. That would be funny. All right. So I've cut my cheek shapes out. Oh. But they're not looking very furry yet. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut into them like this. Just a little bit. Boop. Boop. Oh. Boop. 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 
And then we fold those little bits up so it's like little bits of fur. Ooh. There we go. That and then I'll good. stick them on my koala about there where its cheeks would be. Good idea. Do some more fur. Okay, so while I'm doing that, we've talked about lots of different amazing plants and animals today. We well, have. What are some of the ways that we can help our threatened plants and animals? There's lots of ways we could help Tyler. Yeah? Yeah. Hmm, can you think of some right now, Siobhan? Mm, yeah, oh, I've got one, Tyler. I have one, I have one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one way that you can help is just by picking up your rubbish so the animals don't eat it. Or on a really hot day in summer, maybe you could leave out a little bowl of water so that they have some water to drink. That's a really great idea, Siobhan. Yeah, thank you. Oh, I've got one too. Oh, what is it? Well, remember the Patterson's Curse, the weed? Yeah. Have you ever been bushwalking? Yes, all the time. Well, if you go bushwalking, you need to make sure that your shoes and your socks are nice and clean Ooh. because seeds and bits of weed can get on your shoes. And then when you go into the bush, <gasps> the seeds sprinkle off and they can grow there. Oh, that's right, because the seeds grow into weeds and they spread them all around. That's right. And then when you leave the bush, you also want to make sure that your shoes and socks are nice and clean so you don't mm. take anything home with you. Good idea. So arrive clean, leave, leave clean. clean. And another way you can help is lots of people join special groups <gasps> called wires. And they're people that go out and they help threaten species. And if you ever see an animal in trouble, like a koala, you can call wires or ask an adult to call wires and they'll come and rescue them. Oh, that would be a fantastic idea. Yeah. And there's lots of other ways that you can get involved. And you could head on to our family guide on our website. Some fun activities on there too. Ooh. All right. Okay. How is your be looking? Pretty good, but it's going to fall off all the time. Oh, mine Balance too. it on. So I think I'm going to sticky tape some string so I can tie it to my face. Oh, good idea. I might just use a stick so I can hold it up in front of my Ooh, face. Ooh, good idea. Let's see if I've got one down oh, here. We're a bit tangled. All right, you found some string, Siobhan? Oh, uh, yep. <laughs> my stick. Now, if you don't got have it. a stick like this at home, you could use maybe a piece of cardboard or even a piece of paper rolled into a tube, mm. or maybe even a stick from outside. Okay, I've got my string. Now I'm gonna cut it in half so I have two bits. And then I'm gonna sticky tape one to each side of the inside of my mask. So I've got this one, sticky tape. Looks good, and you're sticking them just next to the eyes, aren't you? Yeah. 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 Okay, sticky, sticky. And now I do the other side. Now I've just got my stick, put it in the middle of my mask, and oh. put a couple of pieces of sticky tape across so I can hold it like this. And they go, got it. Okay, ready? So mask is ready. Now I'm gonna tie it up. Sometimes you need a little bit of help for this. Yeah, so if you need help, <laughs> ask an adult. If you need help tying. <gasps> does it look like a bilby? I think it does, Siobhan. <laughs> oh. Um, I'll just hold it. Oh, good idea. <laughs> we had some string. It can be a little bit tricky with the string, can it, we'll Siobhan? just hold it. That's okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, we're ready. <gasps> All right. <gasps> a Is that a Tasmanian tiger? tiger? Oh, wow. Whoa. <laughs> Where's it gone? <gasps> I think it's time for us to pack up so we can go and look for the Tasmanian tiger, Tyler. I think it might be. <gasps> if you're not finished, that's okay. You could make lots of different threatened Australian <laughs> animal masks. You could. And remember to share them with us on Facebook, on the Play Up Community Facebook page. Mm. And of course, when you're finished, help pack up. And as always, you can find lots of fun activities on our family guide. You can find all our craft instructions and past episodes on our website. <laughs> yeah. See you next time, play up as quickly as we go to the fun that has been the tiger. Go. Bye. Bye. It won't see me if I'm a bilby. <laughs> <laughs>